Hi, I'm Diane Flynn, the director of the Beinecke Scholarship Program. With me is 2018 Beinecke Scholar Dennis Doyle. Dennis, can you tell us a little bit about yourself, please? Awesome. Hi, thanks, Diane. Um, I'm Dennis Doyle. I am a current graduate student at, um, in the MFA program in sculpture and post-studio practice at uh, the University of Colorado at Boulder. I did my undergrad degrees um, at the University of Pittsburgh, where I got a BS in chemistry and a BA in studio art. Um, I'm a first year MFA student here at Boulder. Um, between graduating from Pitt and starting here, I was uh, teaching chemistry courses at um, the University of Pittsburgh. Um, currently, my work right now is kind of setting or centering around the ways we can complicate um, these ideas of analyzing the world and analyzing our identities, and kind of exploring these themes of Catholicism, chemistry, uh, memory, and queerness through an interdisciplinary art practice ranging from traditional sculpture to installation um, and multi-sensory experiences. Okay, thank you, Dennis. And can I ask where, where you do sculpture, what kind of materials do you work with, please? Yeah, um, I work a lot with paper, actually, plaster, um, a lot of non-traditional materials. Um, so I work with scent a lot, um, bacteria, lots of actually bread, um, sourdough starters, um, kind of runs the gambit. Yeah, no, I, one of the things we loved about you was your integration of science and the art and the arts and how creative your work was and based on based on science, which is something the Beinecke Scholarship usually doesn't fund scientists, but the art of your um, background was something that we absolutely adored. So thank you for talking to us about your work. Now, yeah. Dennis, can I ask you, as an undergraduate, what were some of the things you were doing at Pitt that made you a really strong candidate for the Beinecke Scholarship? Yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing that kind of stood out was just getting involved in independent research pretty quickly during my time in undergrad. Um, you know, I think whether it was working in a chemistry lab to doing field research and fellowships in the arts, um, I think I was always working towards establishing a research practice um, that I think translated really well to graduate school. So I think that kind of helped my candidacy, but also I think just indicated I was passionate about what I was learning and trying to take these ideas that you might have in the classroom and just find out what, what makes you passionate about them and how you can continue those out into the real world. Um, yeah, and I think also my background in interdisciplinary research um, was really important. Um, you know, working in both science and art, religion, um, it was like a big part of my application. And I think interdisciplinary collaboration is something that is always important, but we're seeing a really big shift in academia towards it. Um, so I think having that background and knowing how to work with others and work across disciplines um, was really important. Hmm. I, I also remember from your application where you use a lot of science in your artwork, you were very very easily able to explain it in plain English so the entire committee could understand that the techniques you were using, the types of materials you were using, and, and the topics that you were covering. It was, it was very well written and very easy to comprehend no matter what your background was. We didn't need to be scientists to understand your materials. Oh, good. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> no, you're welcome. You're welcome. Uh, thank you. It was, it was a lovely application. And on that topic, uh, are there any tips or hints you have for students who are interested in applying to the Beinecke Scholarship, especially for students who are coming from an arts background or who might be thinking about their supplementary materials that they have to submit? Definitely. Um, I think for me, the biggest part about the application process is to write the application for you first, to really make sure that you're putting yourself in it. Um, you know, don't apply because you want this title or because someone else is encouraging you to do it. Um, I think it's really important to apply, whether it's a scholarship or graduate school, because you feel so passionate about the work that you need to tell someone about it. Um, and I think in writing the application, I remember submitting it and thinking to myself, I don't know what's going to come of this, but I know in going through the process, I got so much out of it. I was reflecting on my work more. I was pulling out new ideas that I didn't see before. And I felt just motivated to keep working, to keep writing, to keep applying for new things. Um, so I think if you go into it, doing this as a, a process for yourself, um, it reads so much better in the application that it's things you are passionate about. You're not trying to fit yourself into a box. Um, and I think especially in creative work, it's important in the application to be 
uniquely um, unapologetically yourself. I think, especially in the arts, we often kind of play ourselves down as like just the artist or the musician, um, but really lean into the traits that make you unique. Um, you know, whether it's you work across different disciplines, whether it's something about your identity, don't be afraid to talk about yourself and really talk passionately about your work. Um, Cause I think in the process they're looking for not only, you know, are you, someone who does good research, but are you someone who's passionate and are you just a person that's engaging and will continue to work on these things even when you move past that small research project you're working on. Um, and I think in terms of arts supplementary application, um, again, like picking work that I think feels relevant and important to you in your practice, I by no means I think applied with like the most cohesive body of work um, in my application. But I really highlighted points that were inside my written essay application and also kind of started to extend out how these things that I can talk about and think about in my head start to actually like manifest themselves in the real world physically. Thank you. No, and I love the advice you're giving, especially about making things relevant to you, writing the application for you. One of the pieces of advice I always give students is don't write what you think the selection committee wants to hear because everybody will write that and then everybody sounds alike. So it really is helpful and important. And as you said, especially in the arts to give us a sense of who you are and what, where you get your creative energy from. So thank you for that, Dennis. Of course. No, thank you so much for your time and sharing your, ex your, your experiences and your advice. I really appreciate it. Uh, thank you for joining us today. Of course, thanks so much for having me, Diane. You're welcome.